Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at bonds issued or sold between interest payments or interest date. What is the main idea? Well, interest is paid periodically on a specified date to the holder. So what does that mean? So let's assume the interest is paid on July 1st. So whoever holds the bond July 1st will get the interest payment. What happens if someone carries the bond from January till March? Then in March, on March 1st, they sold the bond. So John sold the bond to Paul. Well, John will give the bond to Paul as of March 1st, and Paul will receive the full amount. Why? Because as far as the corporation is concerned, whoever holds the bond on July 1st will, go, will get the full interest. What's going to happen is this. Paul will have to pay John any amount of interest accrued from January till March. So the buyer should pay the seller the interest accrued from the last interest payment, we're assuming the first interest payment was January, till that date. So the purchaser will receive the full month worth of interest and the purchaser will be made whole when the company pays the full interest. Now the best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example. And here we're going to assume that a corporation is issuing the bond other than the dated bond. On March 1st, Adam Corporation issues 10-year bond dated January 1st, X1 with a par value of a million. So notice, it's dated January 1st. They did not issue it till March 1st. So whoever buys the bond missed January and February interest value. Who holds that interest? Well, the company was holding the bond. Technically, the company will pay doesn't pay itself, but they save themselves those two months. These bonds have an annual interest of 6%, paid semi-annually January and July. So on a timeline, they sold it in March 1st, so whoever carries the bond will get interest for four month period. So let's take a look at the journal entry. How much cash will the company receive? Well, the company will receive two amounts. The company would receive the full amount, plus they would receive a million dollar times 6% times two divided by 12. And that's gonna give us an additional $10,000. The bonds are a million dollar and they should, they should be credited for a million dollar. And we're gonna credit interest expense, some companies credit interest payable for the $10,000. Now, when we make the interest payment on July 1st, the company will debit interest expense 30000 They will credit cash 30000 Why would they debit interest expense 30000 Well, it's fine. Although they debited interest expense on July 1st, 30000 if you notice that we debited interest expense 30000 we credited interest expense 10 so basically for this period the net interest expense is 20000 why because the company held the bond for ten, for 2 months which they saved themselves $10000 in interest cost now what happens if adam issued the 6% bond at 103 rather than at 100. Before we answer that question, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I can be an additional resource to your accounting education, to your CPA preparation. I don't replace your course, your CPA review course, nor your actual accounting course. I'm a useful addition, supplement, that's gonna help you understand the material better, which in turn, you will do better, understand it better, improve your career chances, a move on with your life past the CPA exam. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is improving your performance. If not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. This is a list of all my accounting courses and that includes resources such as lectures, multiple choice, true, false exercises, my CPA, are aligned, my CPA resources are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Glean, and Wiley. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also provide you with 1,500 plus AICPA previously released question with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Well, if Adam issued the bond at 103 on March 1st, here's what's going to happen. They're going to receive 103 premium for the bond, plus they are going to receive the accrued interest that we computed earlier happens to be 10,000. Therefore, we would receive 1,030,000 for the bond. We would receive 10,000 for the premium. The cash will be 1,040,000. The bonds will still be 1,000,000. 
the premium is 30,000 and we'll have an interest expense of $10,000. Now to learn a little bit more about this topic, what, what you should do is go to my website, farhatlectures.com and work additional multiple choice questions and see additional resources. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.